Today we have Keon and Jalen Berry, brothers. Um, super excited to be here with you guys. Um, I just wanted to start by having both of you guys kind of introduce yourselves and then we'll backtrack, talk about um, how you got to where you are now and how Supreme really impacted your journey. So um, Jalen, do why don't you start us off? So my name is Jalen D. Berry. I am a currently a serial entrepreneur. I actually recently just left the banking industry at Goldman Sachs after working there for about two and a half years. I'm from the Windsor, Hartford area, born and raised. Uh, went to, you know, graduated from Windsor High School. Before that, I was in boarding school at Suffolk Academy. Uh, graduated from Wesleyan uh, with a BA in English. Um, and extremely excited to be here. Um, I love using numbers to build society. Uh, that's kind of my thing. So again, excited to be here and excited to um, speak on behalf of how Supreme Athlete impacted my life. Hi everyone, my name is Keon N. Berry. Uh, I'm a Morehouse graduate and currently a graduate student at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, a proud crack graduate and um, a proud Windsor native as well. So obviously very similar to Jalen because we're brothers, but definitely proud to be here to talk about Supreme Athlete, you know, how it impacted my life and things like that. Awesome. So let's talk about high school for a second. We'll backtrack to high school. You guys are both high school athletes. Um, so let's talk about what your sentiment towards sports were at that time. Um, did you see it as a career path? Was it an into college or was it just kind of something that you enjoyed to do? So for me, you know, growing up as a young kid, I think football and um, playing sports in general was just seen as a way out. So um, mainly just a way out of Connecticut and as far as moving myself up to the next level so you know I think I was very much so in high school you know around that high school age I was very focused on football being a means to me getting to the next level with college mm -hmm. I think um, probably around my senior year I actually had a conversation with my high school coach in which I kind of told him you know I, I, I knew I wasn't really trying to go the pro route necessarily mm -hmm. um, but I knew that I did love playing football and I knew oh sorry guys I knew that I did love playing football and I knew that um, I did want to take it to the next level. But um, for me, I just, it was just about getting the next level for me, pretty much. No, that makes complete sense. Makes complete sense. How about you, Keon? Um, for me, so definitely um, love football, you know, just kind of watching Jalen's success and knowing my dad's success with the sport growing up. So it was something I was always really passionate about because it's a part of our heritage, it's a part of our culture um, as a family and things like that. So it was something that I kind of went with, but although I was passionate about it, I always had more of a passion for academics, right? So I wasn't quite sure where I was going to go with football, right? Because uh, I knew it was a part of our culture, but I knew that um, I wanted to, you know, be a part of it, but also tune into my own gifts and talents. So um, I honestly didn't know where football was gonna lead me. You know, it was so deeply rooted, um, like I, you know, kind of said into our family's like uh, fabric that I was like, you know what, we'll just see where it goes. And, you know, as I just continue to just live life, right? I think that um, life kind of unfolds and, and uh, has a special way of kind of showing you your, your your gifts, your talents, your your treasures, right? So through that, I was able to kind of know that academics was my um, passion and, you know, that I would eventually bear off before even graduating from um, high school, so. Yeah, nice. And and I think that that's such like a big fact. You you kind of live and you learn and you see where where you can kind of tap in and where it makes the most sense for you. So Supreme, let's talk about Supreme for a second. Why did you guys decide to sign up for Supreme in the first place and and kind of talk about Stack's impact on your kind of football career and and just your career in general? Um, so I'm happy to go first. So I think that uh, we decided to be Supreme Athlete because we kind of saw the impact that it was having on the community, on other athletes. And a lot of our friends were kind of enrolling and we were seeing the results, right? Like they were getting a lot faster. They were becoming more agile. Like they were um, increasing their confidence. And I think that you know, those were things that kind of interested us um, as brothers and as a family and, and you know, what kind of got us started, you know, going to Supreme and things like that. So um, enrolled and um, I feel like, you know, for me, the, the, the impact, because I'll let Jalen talk about himself, but for me, the, the impact was tremendous. I think more so on my confidence and other aspects, because while I knew that there were other things that, you know, there were things that I was really good at. Um, one, just having someone who believes in you is, you know, really an, an essential. Two, mentorship. The mentorship aspect is everything. Having people who can see 10 years, you know, down the line, you might only be 10 years old, right? Um, and then that other aspect is just those transferable skills. Like I said, you know, I was really good in, 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 um, 
in academics. And although I was good in football, I wasn't like superb, right? I was good. Like it kind of, those skills that I learned at Supreme kind of translated into the real world. Um, and I, I, you know, I took the confidence with me. I took the, it's a mindset, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that is so true. The mindset. I think that that's that's literally the mentality that Stack just continues to preach and shares with you guys and passes along. So I'm glad that you like really hit on that. Jalen, how about yourself? Yeah, I would say for me, my pull to Supreme was um, honestly initially it was just hope. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the instilling of hope is extremely tremendous when they talk. You talk about young black men, um, but just young men in general who want to be something, um, who want to see more than just the average pastors who want to um, excel the ladder of greatness itself. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me, the biggest um, thing for me was to have this group of kind of OGs, if so to say, who are running a program who had been in places where I wanted to go. Um, I think that instilled hope in me automatically. So um, I think that was the first one. I, and I think that was a pivotal thing for me because I needed it, you know, to help build my confidence in the Keon. I would say that the single most probably impactful thing I picked up from Supreme Athlete that I've taken in my life in any realm I've been, whether it's been a boardroom, a meeting room, delivering a deal, uh, anything, it would be the mental toughness that was instilled in me. Um, and, you know, it, it came from doing very basic things like doing push ups, yeah. <laughs> um, doing laps. Um, but that mental toughness has always stuck with me because it's a second gear that I had. So where other people might get tired. I can go another day, another mile, another minute. Um, And that's because I learned those fundamentals and basics at a program like Supreme Athlete. Um, And things like that, especially for young men, are very, very important to learn as far as persistence. Mm -hmm. Um, Because as we know, as we climb this ladder, like it it takes a lot of work. (laughs) It takes a lot of faith um, in yourself. So um, I think those two things are two things I really, really picked up a lot uh, from Supreme and um really the things that attracted me the most to the program itself um so yeah no i appreciate that and those transferable skills that you both kind of mentioned are kind of essential to your growth as an athlete and just as like a student of kind of the game of life um and i think that that's something that really stack preaches is the diversity of being a student of the game of life not just um your sport Um, So you guys were kind of all involved, both of you were involved in activities outside of sports um, in high school and then as you transitioned into into college. Um, But what were some extracurricular activities that you were involved in at the high school level and how did that involvement kind of shape your decisions um, for your college, your college decisions? Um, so for me, I was doing National Honor Society. I was my first student government association president. So just things with leadership more so. And it kind of um, really shaped me, you know, wanting to go to Morehouse because we know that Morehouse's mission is to, uh, it's a school that um, specializes in helping men to lead lives of leadership and service. So um, it was literally just completely directly transferable. Um, and like I said, that academic aspect, that humanitarian aspect, that innovative social entrepreneurial aspect was Morehouse itself, right? And like Jalen said, he talked about the audacity of hope, right? Like, I think it requires a lot of courage. I think that Morehouse definitely um, was a place that I was able to kind of um, improve my vision of what I thought a better world was and better life for myself while mustering that courage to take those leaps, to make those jumps, you know, to to make those bounds to whatever it is that I, you know, kind of wanted to do in my life. So um, those are some of the things I was involved in and that's how I kind of, you know, ended up at Morehouse. Nice, thank you. Um, let's let's talk about Morehouse for a second before you answer Jalen, sorry. Um, so let's talk about HBCUs for a second because I think that um, in the public school system, I didn't really know what HBCU was only until because my dad went to an HBCU, he went to Hampton. So like I knew what the kind of the culture, the legacy, what it was and how it was important and impactful for our community. But for yourself, how did you come across HBCUs and how did um, you kind of learn about the importance of, of them in our community? Sure, and to be completely frank, because I like to be candid, I didn't. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I, you know, I went to a school, unfortunately, where guidance counselors were discouraging kids to go there because of the lack of financial aid or the lack of success, et cetera, et cetera. Um, although that's not evidence based or factual, so I, you know, saw it. I saw it kind of like as a knockoff brand. 
you know? And someone told me like, you know, go check out, you know, one of my mentors, go check out the school called Morehouse and went on the website, didn't even know a school like this existed, right? So just having those completely authentic black spaces where we acknowledge the, the work of our ancestors and those who have came before us, you know, those who created the, the really the framework for society in terms of literature, in terms of architecture, in terms of mathematics, in terms of business, right? Like that really started with us, right? So just owning our cultural legacy and um, and really standing upon it and using it as a foundation, like I said, to create a better world. That was kind of, you know, some of the things that I, I you know, I, I, you know, learned at Morehouse and um, I wasn't really aware of till I got to Morehouse, you know, cause I think Connecticut is a space that doesn't really push, you know, historically black colleges and university. And I think that that's extremely problematic because um, identity in education is such an important topic that gets so overlooked, right? It helps us to understand what this idea of community even means, mm -hmm. right? We can't have any sort of community unless there's no, you know, you know, if there's no sense of what identity is, cultural identity, identity, you know, uh, of self, you know, knowledge of self, this idea of self-awareness and consciousness is so important. So, you know, I think HBCUs are so important. Morehouse is one of my top two best life decisions. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, so thanks for that. No, I appreciate that answer. And I think that, that it's just so, so important to just recognize and in, in, in the community where, and I feel like in the sport community in Connecticut, you really do see that it's this this big black community coming together and, and creating strides and making impacts both on and off the field and, and, and Stack and Supreme and the people that come through the program like yourselves and like so many other guys are, are direct products of the community that we're trying to create and we need to sustain um, in Connecticut and continue to grow both outside of sport as well. But I think that it really starts um, in sport in Connecticut. Um, so yeah, I appreciate that. How about you, Jalen? Um, what are some things that you kind of participated in and talk about how um, that kind of transitioned um, into Wesleyan? You were um, a fellow in uh, what is it? Social entrepreneurship, uh, social entrepreneurship fellow at Wesleyan and your key component of the Cardinals football team. So kind of talk about um, that transition and in that decision. Yeah, most definitely um, for me. So I was known at Windsor, when I was at Windsor, actually, I was known for playing football, uh, funny enough, but I also had a lot of other things I was interested in. So, you know, I was actually on the debate team. Actually, I was at the snack man. So I actually was selling snacks. Like I was making like $200, something like that a week selling snacks uh, for like a dollar a piece. Um, I remember um, I was also a part of the entrepreneurship club in the FBLA with uh, Mr. Foe. So business and entrepreneurship have always been ingrained in the hallmark of my being. Um, again, football was the vehicle to get me to the next step. Um, I was also, you know, on a, on, a, on a high honor roll society. I was top 10% uh, of my class. So I had the grades as well. So a school like Wesleyan, you know, for me, when I was in my recruitment process, I was honestly just trying to go to the best school possible. I was I, I was focused Ivy League around that better because I knew that the avenues that could open for me going to a small Ivy like Wesleyan and the NESCAC or going straight Ivy um, is are tremendous. Um, schools like this, they make millionaires yeah. and are literally just sitting and playing hiding and uh, in plain sight, sorry, for all of us to see. So um, to be recruited by a school like Wesleyan, you know, I was extremely grateful. Um, and to be on that campus and to experience just the climate that was there is it's a it's a it's an extremely just different place than any place else I've ever been. Very eclectic environment mm -hmm. and a place where you see everything. Um, so I love that. And um, just I guess the entrepreneur entrepreneur efforts, things like that kind of snowball for me, I would say probably around my sophomore year um, when I was at Wesleyan, just doing internships and um, I actually started my nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, from that is what allowed me to get into the fellowship program at Wesleyan, which is uh, the Patricelli Fellowship Program. Actually, Bob Patricelli, who's a huge uh, social entrepreneur throughout the state of Connecticut and the world, actually is like, you know, like who's who's a name after. So, um, very very big program at the university, um, and actually that is what spawned me to Goldman Sachs, uh, working in investment banking. So, um, it's a cra it's crazy how you know like avenues you set up for yourself maybe you know being in high school you know kind of snowballed to something really great years later um and honestly I, I did not have a plan for that but um at least not initially that I was gonna end up going in that route but um I do thank God for it and I definitely can say that just some of those hallmark things I learned you know um that persistence in my mindset the ability to push past what my body knew and still put forth a high quality product 
as myself, just my brand alone, um, I learned those hallmarks through Supreme. So um, can't speak enough about how invaluable the experience was for me, for sure. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about the Jalen D. Berry Foundation for a minute. You you talk, you touched on it. Um, and that's something that I really think is really important to talk about because this is a nonprofit organization with the goal of closing the equity and opportunity gap in the state of Connecticut, which is huge because there is such a, a gap in, in our community and in the state of Connecticut. Um, so first, just congratulations on all of your success. Much success to you. Um, but it's such a powerful initiative to take on. And I think that there's like a parallel between you and, and Stack and Supreme and what you're doing in our community and kind of similar to how you felt um, like Supreme and the people were to you, you are to other people now. Um, so what makes you so passionate about your initiative at the Jalen D. Berry Foundation? Yeah, um, to be honest, it's, it's very simple for me. Um, a lot of, I, I'm not one for too much colorful language. I like to make it simple. And, and that's because at the end of the day, you know, if, if I make it to the top and if people who I trust are not there with me, it would never, it would never be fulfill, true fulfillment for me. Um, that was the init- that was the, really the initiation of the thought process of this foundation, which started out as scholarships for kids um, at Windsor High School, where you know my alma mater, obviously. Um, so, um, really, for me, the the work is close to my heart because it's impacting people who I know. It's it's my own community. It's people who I've grown up with, or I know somebody in their family, or know a cousin of a cousin, things like that. It's a small state. Um, so I'm extremely passionate about bridging gaps in the state of Connecticut. Yeah. Um, and I know for our organization, we are extremely passionate about doing everything we can to bridge the opportunity gap. So, um, you know, I think those basic struggles and I think also just with my family. I mean, my family is my, one of my number one uh, motivators. And I've, I've changed the sentence a little bit to be that I do it for my family. I do it for me, yeah. but I'm extremely inspired by my family. Mm-hmm. Um, because without without just seeing their stories and seeing things they've been through, I, I wouldn't be able to keep going. I mean, yeah. I mean, my mother, you know, was 17, didn't even walk the stage, um, had three kids by 22. My father was, shoot, my age now with, with three kids, you know, and they were, you know, struggling, trying, you know, trying to make it work, you know. And um, I think coming up, I mean, me, Keanu, and Destiny, we, we saw a lot, um, were exposed to a lot, both good and bad. Um, but what I can say is that I know that just the five of us being in that household, I think even my extended family, like my grandmothers, um, they played a huge role in my identity and just how I view the world and mm. people who I want to impact. I mean, the, the very name is behind impact and human resources and people. Yeah. So people, it's a people's name. So um, I know our family is big on that. You know, how do we do that? How do we create bridges for people? How do we stand as an example? So, yeah. So continuing with you, Keon, um, obviously followed you on Instagram for a while, seeing so many of your amazing accomplishments. Again, congratulations to you. And there's so many places that we can kind of start with your accomplishments. But let's talk about um, Forbes Under 30 Scholarship Scholar, um, because I think it's going to tap on a few different things of your other accomplishments. So how would you just tell everybody what that is and some of the reasons why you believe that you were kind of in that space and, and had the opportunity to be in that space? Yeah, sure. So, um Forbes Under 30 Scholar, that is like one of my biggest like accomplishments um, on paper because I feel like I don't do work, work for awards, I do award winning work. So the actual- Oh my award- God, I'm sorry, I love that. That, say that one more time, say that one more time. <laughs> yeah, I don't do work for awards, I do award winning work. So that being said, the prize is never the actual award, right? Being in Forbes, going to the University of Pennsylvania, being the Black Man Can Campus King of the Year, et cetera, et cetera it's actually like the impact that you have on people's lives, right? That's where the fulfillment comes comes from. And um, I was able to get Forbes under 30 by impacting people's lives at such a young age, right? So in this cohort, they select, I believe it might be a thousand undergraduate students from around the world who are creating the largest impacts in their community, right? And you have to, I think, demonstrate, I think it's scholarship, leadership, and innovation. There's something else, but basically people who are making a change in their communities. So I had a nonprofit that I had started my my freshman year of college that kind of took off where I was, you know, implementing after-school programs in Atlanta public schools. And, you know, we generated a lot of success. We were partnering with Google, Chick-fil-A, a a lot of other major entities to bring cost-free resources to low-income neighborhoods. Kind of like Jalen was saying with the, you know, bridging the opportunity gap um 
and we were able to do it successfully. So that's how, you know, I got recognized. It was an amazing experience. You know, got to do this little thing with Cadillac. Um, this little thing. <laughs> <laughs> got to do this little thing with Cadillac. Um, it's opened doors in other ways. Um, I know you've probably seen my, my music video with Little Baby, which is a protest I did here in Atlanta. It was a Sprite commercial. There's been a number of things with the media that I've done, but it all kind of has started with wanting, wanting to bridge the opportunity gap, like Jayla was saying, and create impact um, and measure impact to see how we can scale our impact and reach more people, not just here in the state or in the United States, but people all across the globe. I think that our, our vision um, really attacks or some some social problems that we see and we're invested in innovating solutions for people across the world because they're 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 universal problems so um yeah that was you know kind of how i got forbes under 30 scholar with doing the berry academy nonprofit and you know getting recognized for that and really using forbes under 30 that recognition specifically to create more impact for more people so Love that. And I think that the, the whole idea of impact is something that you guys both really, really touched on. Impact, activism, and leading leading the, the charge for change in our communities. Um, so let's talk about that for, for a little bit. Um, education is of utmost importance, I think, to you guys. And I see it so clearly in what you guys are doing. Um, just talk about the, the importance of continuing education and sharing your, oh, sorry, and sharing your knowledge with the community. Let's talk about that for a little bit. How important is education um, to you guys and, and what are some advice that you can give to people about continuing their education? I would say, well, so first I'll say, you know, this is my perspective. I know Keon is the education connoisseur. So <laughs> <laughs> listen, we two brothers, but we, I think we have, you know, our own thought process on it. I will say for me, you know, the world that we live in currently, and I mean, to any young person watching this or and really any person, the world we live in nowadays is a world where you can create something and become a millionaire instantly. Exactly. So with that, I would say using that hand in hand with having solid fundamentals for education mm -hmm. can lead to something that could be a quick pop or a quick blow up. Should you put you should you utilize the education and add that with the actual passion that you have inside your heart and your soul. So um, I would say, you know, education is extremely important because it it shows us a lot of the baselines and fundamentals of what we need as far as problem solving, as far as understanding and contextualizing the world. So I think nowadays it's even more important probably to have as high level education as you can. Um, but I would say the applicability is the most important as well, which is taking that, taking that actual education and applying it to real life. Like how do we do this in real time? Mm -hmm. How do we, how do we use this in, um, in real life? So, uh, I would say, like, I think the education piece is extremely important. I would say, you know, college isn't for everybody, mm -hmm. um, but the ones who it's for, um, I definitely would say utilize it because it truly is a bridge. Um, and for me, you know, yes, I performed well, very well in school, um, but honestly, a lot of a lot a lot of school was, was for me was the social capital. Mm -hmm. And that's the part that a lot of people miss is I utilize the grades and the things I was doing at your, at your curricular wise to catapult myself from a social capital standpoint, which allowed me to walk into doors without needing certain paperwork. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. so I, I just walked in off of my name. You know, I walked in off what I had done. Yeah. So I think that's a, a key cog with education is that, yes, is there to educate you, but there's a there's a social capital aspect mm -hmm. that if you get with the right people, if you can link with the right people, you can make your dreams come true even faster than you ever thought. And that's just because of who knows you and the work that you're putting out. So no, I, appreciate I think that's my idea on education. I, I appreciate that because I think a lot of people don't always think about that. And and we, we talk about internships a lot and just in general, how important internships are, but people don't understand that like, yeah, you can have a great internship at a great place, but if you're not doing what you need to do and taking the tools, the resources from that internship and applying them to other things that you're doing, it, it's useless. It's just, again, something on paper that may get you into a room, but won't keep you there. So yeah, I really appreciate what you just said there. How about you, Keon, um, with education, the importance that it has on our community? Yeah, for sure. And I definitely understand the sentiments about education. And him challenging me has really transformed my mindset. And I think that I have a vision for education that is so different from what we're actually seeing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I pulled up my philosophy. I'm going to read a line from it. So it's 
Education is indeed a teleological process, a process directed toward one goal. That being said, I believe that a truly educated person understands that the goal of their education is to demonstrate their ability to acquire skills that will help them be successful in navigating life. And that's truly what I believe. I feel, I feel like education um, isn't that now, which is why people don't have interest. Mm. They don't have interest. It's not transferable, which is why I've delved more into this idea of experiential learning. How do we take the skills from the real world and make them applicable in the education setting so that we're teaching students how to navigate life, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you see, you know, Bell Hooks, writer Bell Hooks, you'll see, you know, W.E.B. Dubois talk about it. Education is should teach people about life. It shouldn't just teach them about, you know, um, books and, and, and papers and to a degree, those things help show evidence of the knowledge that you've acquired, but you still have to get out there. You still have to do it, right? Jalen said, you still have to acquire those, those networks, right? You still have to acquire those skills. They have to be sharpened. You have to be advanced. There's a look, right? Like there's so many other things that you have to do. So education should just provide us the literature, right? It should provide us a, the foundation for those things. And then on the back end, there should be some experiential learning that takes place to help us become experts in those things so when we actually get into the field that we're able to really hone those skills so what i would say to any young person right now is that the greatest thing that you can do is be yourself mm. that's not a form of education that we normally look at like the great school the, the great the good schools teach students what to think the great the great schools teach students how to be themselves yeah. right because mm -hmm. it within is your treasure right and when you're able to operate in your treasure and operate in your gift your gift will make room for you mm -hmm. right so i would tell a young person to be themselves right because whatever is on the uh, trajectory or the spectrum of life for you is going to happen regardless but it will happen to the extent in which you are able to be yourself you're able to demonstrate compassion you're able to demonstrate um your understanding of how survival right and what your survival requires for you so mm. no i appreciate that that yes that's powerful it's powerful it's meaningful and it's it's really all about that that network and and creating a space to to feel appreciated and you have to be comfortable in yourself you have to know yourself because that's the only way again that your gift will will show and shine so just to wrap it up, um, I don't want to keep you guys too long, but I want to know what's next for you both because I just, you guys are always doing something new, always trying something new. How can we support you and, and what, what do you have going on next? I think uh, we both giggled there <laughs> because I think um, we're both very, um, when you're cooking chicken in a pot, the only way, to, when you're cooking chicken in a skillet, the only way to get it to, to cook right is if you let it marinate. Marinate, yeah. <laughs> One thing that we like to do is just kind of zip our lips and just kind of let the work speak for itself as it always does. Um, you know, there's a lot of great ideas, but we also realize that in order to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk. Absolutely. And I think that's the difference between the goods and the greats. Those are actually walking the walk. So I know for me, I don't know what Jalen wants to say, but before I announce anything, I want it to be done first. I want it to be a done deal. Cause there are definitely some things that I am excited about for this year um, <laughs> that are in the skillet marinating right now, <laughs> you know, but when they get out of the skillet, they'll definitely be ready to serve. So uh, to be served. So um, definitely excited about things going on, but I want that to kind of just unfold, you know, when, when at the appointed time. <laughs> absolutely absolutely no we're excited to see what what you guys have cooking up i'm excited Jalen, how about you same answer <laughs> so i will yeah I, i'll piggyback off what keon said and again you know you know we're about results mm -hmm. straight up so everything this whole brand we're doing you know is it's cool and all but we're about providing the real the real the real the real sauce you know like the the real deal so um I think, you know, piggyback on what Keon said, yes. I will say, though, for anybody who does want to support, I mean, you're more than welcome to, you know, check out the website with the foundation, www.jdbfdn.org. Uh, more than willing to donate or welcome to donate. Uh, we also have a grant program and our scholarship program. The grant program will open March March 1st, I believe. So um, it's on a rolling basis. So um, everything we do is to support, you know, bridging gaps in the state of Connecticut. So to that end, I will say, you know, if anybody wants to support from there, wants to know what's happening with that, definitely check out the website. But as far as kind of the other projects, those will come when we deliver these results. So, but I'm excited for the future for sure. 
Definitely. Thank you guys so much for tapping in. I really appreciate it. I, I know that Stack and the team at Supreme, they are appreciative of your words and, and what you're sharing because this is a completely different um, look and insight on the impact that, that a program like Supreme can have on the community. And that's really what we're trying to show here. Um, yes, you can go to, to a division one school and play a sport. You can go on to, to any kind of division and play, play a sport or you don't have to, but there's a lasting impact that Supreme has on you, has on your growth, has on your leadership, your confidence and, and shapes you to, to who you are. So I really appreciate you guys sharing your stories and sharing where you guys are headed. I cannot wait to see what is next and what is coming this year. Um, and I, I just appreciate you guys so much. So thank you.